Hello, Pure family. So glad you could join us for church today. If you're part of our online experience on Facebook, you can click a like, share this video with a friend, or share it to your own Facebook page. You can also start a watch party of the service and invite your friends. And a big shout out to everyone attending the watch party at the Peoria campus. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And so here we go. We're gonna take this time to refocus and encourage our hearts, cast out fear and lies from our minds. We're gonna lean in, grab our Bibles, open our Bible apps. Let's worship together. Let's grow together and become more like Jesus for the sake of others. Welcome to church. Hey, what's up, Pure Heart family? We're so excited you guys are here today. Hey, we're gonna teach you a new song. It talks all about testifying on the Lord's goodness. So come on, no matter where you're at, if you're willing, if you're able, let's sing together. Say, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on, you sing. I believe in signs and wonders. And I have resurrection power. Yes, I do. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. My praise belongs to you forever. Come on, we say. This is my testimony. From death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'll testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Hey. Oh, I'll testify. Come on, let's sing together. Come together, sons and daughters. Blood and wash in water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started Come on, if you believe it, you say Our God will finish what He started This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, yes, it is. From death to life. Come on, we declare this together. You see, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. You're not. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I come on, we say if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony.
rising sun shall pierce the night and i will rise with all the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face come on no matter where you're at we're gonna praise his name together let's sing and no oh, praise the name of the lord Come on, you lift your voice. Oh, praise His name forever. Oh, for endless, for endless days. We will sing Your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord. I Come on, all the praise, all the honor. No oh, praise the name of the Lord. We praise His name. Oh, together we love to take a moment and just pray for another pastor in the valley and this week we're going to be praying for pastor eric at the bridge church and at the bridge church pastor eric is actually part of our better together church community across the valley and they're also part of school connect and not just that but during this season they've been feeding hungry community members each and every week around them and that is just so awesome so let's pray for them father god i just thank you so much for Pastor Eric and everything that you're doing at the Bridge Church. God, we are so humbled and honored to be part of Better Together with them, Lord, to be praising a, a single kingdom-minded God. And Lord, I just pray for Pastor Eric and his church that, Lord, their cup would just overflow. God, that their spiritual cup would overflow, that their financial cup would overflow so that they may love others like you do, Jesus. And it's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. God is doing amazing things in us and through us. And we're so blessed that with your cheerful and generous giving, we get to be a part of the plans that God has for this world. We consistently ask the question, if Pure Heart was gone tomorrow, would our community miss us? And over the last few years, we've been one of the host sites for hundreds of people to attend the Global Leadership Summit, which this year is shifting due to COVID to an entirely online experience. But during the time that we've been hosting this event, Pure Heart has had so many of our leaders and staff use this conference as a key tool to grow in their relationships and mature in their leadership abilities. The GLS gave them the tools to thrive in the areas that God had called them to lead and have influence in. And now during this time of COVID-19 with the circumstances of life changing daily, we've seen these leaders now pressing in and serving during the current uncertainty our world has been facing, using their leadership tools and God-given gifts to help with worship, tech and video, praying for people's needs, leading online Zoom groups, helping with childcare, drive-through distribution events, hospitals assistance, bereavement calls, delivering food to the homebound and, and so much much more. We have seen the people of our church express leadership in the midst of this crisis, loving others in the midst of a broken, polarized, and stressed out world, not because they don't have fears, they don't have financial problems or health concerns of their own, but because of Christ in them. And from you, Pure Heart, saying that growing, developing, investing in leaders 
that is a value that is important to our church. And now for such a time as this, we see the abundance of that fruit from that investment. And the best part is that Christ's name is being glorified. As the world is seeing the church lean in when so many are pulling back. So as you put your tithes and offerings in the mail, as you're giving online or text to give in the Pure Heart app, know that this is what your generosity is going to support. Thank you, Pure Heart, for your continued support as God's expanding our reach across the nation, the world, to reach hurting and overlooked people. Leadership doesn't just happen, it's cultivated. So if you don't want to miss the opportunity to step into becoming the leader that you know God's called you to be, sign up now, pureheart.org slash GLS, before this Tuesday, July 21st, to get the temporary reduced registration price. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the tithes and offerings that you're bringing in, God. We pray that right now, you're touching each and every person financially, you're blessing them, you're allowing them to meet needs of people around them, and you're meeting their needs, God, as they're pouring out from themselves. Allow us to use those finances to begin to continue to reach and touch people who are hurting in this time, in the name of Jesus. We know that God's gonna continue to grow us into becoming more like Christ, as we remember, the church is not a building. Pure Heart family, I miss you. I'll be back next weekend. Next weekend, I'll be back teaching. I cannot wait. Praying for you as we walk through the month of July together. It's been an interesting month for all of us, I know. This weekend, Mike Delster, Pastor Mike, is going to be preaching. You are going to be blessed. You're going to be encouraged. I love this young leader. He is growing by leaps and bounds. He is a difference maker. This young man has a great mind. He thinks deeply. He's one of the best strategists we have on our team, and he loves to tell people how they can grow in Christ. So welcome, Pastor Mike Delster. You're going to love it this weekend. See you next weekend. We are in uncertain times. Never before have there been so many things that we just don't know. I was reading this article this morning about how Arizona is number one in how bad coronavirus is right now. Number one in the entire world. We're worse than every single state and every single country. We're number one and we don't know when this is going to get better, when this is going to end and what it looks like on the other side. We don't know what the lasting effect is going to be on the economy. We don't know how bad unemployment is going to get and when it's going to get better. We don't know how many small businesses will be forced to close. We don't know what our education system is going to look like. We don't know when we'll be able to go to a concert or a football game or a fireworks show again. And what if this gets worse in the fall with flu season? We don't even know if we can get to go trick-or-treating or host Thanksgiving dinner at our homes or what Christmas Eve services will look like. And we don't know if there's going to be a vaccine. And if there is, how well will it work? And we don't know if we can go get to go outside again and not have to wear a mask. And I don't know when my kids will be able to go back to school, see their friends, play sports, hug their teachers, and not be home 24-7. And I don't know when we're going to be able to see my grandma again. We don't know if my wife will be able to see her mom before she passes away. There are so many things that we don't know. But what if that's okay? What if God wants to do something in this season of uncertainty to remind us of his certainty? In uncertain times, we can be certain. So today we're going to talk about the Israelites as they're passing from Egypt into the promised land. So if you have your Bible or your Bible apps, turn with me to Exodus chapter 16. So the Israelites, they're in uncertain times. They're in this in-between. So they're going from Egypt, a place of slavery and a place of slavery and captivity, and they're moving into the promised land. But before they get into the promised land, they travel through the wilderness and what's really interesting about the wilderness, this season of the in-between, is God didn't take them from a straight shot from Egypt to the promised land. Instead, he took them the long way around. He took them on the scenic route because I think there was things that God wanted to teach the Israelites about the middle, about the season of the in-between. And I think the majority of our life is actually spent in the middle. So some of us 
during some seasons in our lives, we spend some time in pain, in slavery, in this captivity. And, and other seasons in our life, we spend it in the promise, in the blessing of the promised land. But I think for most of us, for most of the time, it's spent in the middle, in traveling from one destination to another. And what if that's okay? What if God uses uncertain times to teach his people to be certain in him? So Israel is about a month and a half into this journey. And here's where we pick up the story in Exodus chapter 16. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the Israelites said to them, if only we died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around with pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. No, you didn't. But you brought us into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So they're about a month and a half in and all their food and their provisions are running out and they're realizing we might starve here. We might die here. And you know what, Moses? It would actually be better if I was back in my moment of greatest pain and just died there than to live in this season of uncertainty. Why did you bring us here? Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them to see whether they will follow my instructions. And on the sixth day, they're to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So God rains down this bread from heaven. And so every single morning, the Israelites wake up and they gather enough bread for that day. And God also says, you know what? Bread isn't enough. We can't just have this all carb diet. That's way too much gluten for one person. I got to send some protein too. So he also sends quail. Every single evening, a ton of quail would come into the camp. And and it was like these quail were just so excited to be killed and be eaten by these Israelites, which actually makes me kind of sad because we have some quail in our neighborhood and they're by far the cutest bird I've ever seen. They just, I don't even know if quail can fly because I've never seen quail fly, but they just kind of like scamper about. And there's like the mommy quail and the daddy quail and they have a whole bunch of little baby quails and they're just running around. And so it makes me sad that the Israelites ate them. But in uncertain times, I can be certain that God will provide. In uncertain times, we can be certain that God will provide. Now notice I didn't say that we can be certain how God will provide or what God will provide or when God will provide it. We can't be certain in those things because God knows what we need. He knows when we need it. And God doesn't always answer my prayers on my timeline. But my response needs to be one of gratitude. Can I be grateful for what little I have, even though it's less than I might have used to have? Or do I complain about that? Flip forward a couple chapters to Exodus 18. And here we find Moses is exhausted. He's tired. He's living in this space of uncertainty and he feels this burden of leadership, the responsibility, not just for him, but for the nation of Israel and the future of Israel. And he just, he's weighed down by this. And his father-in-law Jethro comes to give him some advice. He sees what Moses is going through. So in Exodus chapter 18, verse 17, Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you, you will only wear yourselves out. And I want you to hear this today because I believe that this is a piece of advice that Jethro gave to Moses, but I also, I I just feel this uh, deep in my soul that this is something that God has for us today. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. And that's how some of us feel right now. The weight of this, it's, it's exhausting. There's, there's fatigue. I'm, we're working so hard. There's so much on our plate. There's so much on our shoulders. It's, I'm, I'm mentally tired. I'm emotionally tired. I'm spiritually tired. I'm physically tired. There's just so much. But what Jethro says to Moses, of course it's too much. You don't feel this way because you're weak or because you're a failure. It's because you weren't supposed to do it alone. You weren't supposed to be alone. And Moses already knew this. We already know this because a chapter ago in chapter 17, Moses is standing up on the hill looking down at the battle. The Israelites are fighting this battle against their enemies. And when Moses raises his hands to praise God and give him victory for the, give him, 
When Moses raises his hands to give God praise for the victory he knows is coming, the Israelites, they start winning the battle. But when Moses gets tired and starts to lower his arms, the Israelites, they start losing the battle. So Aaron and Hur, they see this happening and they go up to Moses and they say, you're not going to do this alone, Moses. I can't carry that burden for you, but I can, I can help carry you. And so here's what they do in verse 12. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. And then Aaron and Hur, they held his arms up, one on one side and one on the other. So his hands remained steady until sunset. Aaron and her, they held up his hands. And you have an Aaron and a her in your life that God has provided for you, that God has given you. And maybe those people's names are even coming to mind right now. So take out your phone, text them right now, and just let them know like, hey, I'm I'm having a hard time. This weight is really heavy right now. Would Would you pray for me? Or maybe there's a Moses in your life, somebody that you can see right now that is having a hard time, that is struggling with the weight that is, that might be crushing them. Send them a text right now. Hey, I see you. I see how hard you're working. I see how exhausted you are. Know that I'm praying for you. What can I do to help? How can I be there for you? It's so easy to feel like in this season that we are alone, but in uncertain times, you can be certain you are not alone alone. Because we're not at church right now. We're not physically gathered. We're not here right now. So it can be so easy to feel like we're, we're not in it together. We're not alone. We can't give hugs. We can't give out high fives or fist bumps. We can't even see people's smiles when we go outside. And it's like, we're all wearing these masks and it's like, we're, we're afraid to make eye contact. See, when I was a kid at school, finding friends was kind of easy. It was just your mom set up play dates or you were friends with the kids on, on the same team as you or the same grade. And if this kid was being mean, well, you just went and go, went to talk to that kid. But then I became an adult and I found out that friendship is actually a lot harder. It requires a lot more intentionality. It requires me to take steps and to reach out to people, especially when I need people. And don't believe the lie that you're alone. We can be, uncer- we can be certain in uncertain times that you are not alone. And I also want to give an encouragement to people who might, your Aaron and her might be in your same house. It might be your mom or might be your dad or might be your spouse. And just because you've been spending a lot of time together doesn't mean you're closer together. Maybe say, take some minutes today and just sit down and and have a conversation and be real. And like, I'm not, I'm not doing okay. This weight is really heavy. Would, would you help me carry it? Or how can I help carry what's on your shoulders? How can I pray for you today? In uncertain times, you can be certain that you are not alone. Jump forward a few more chapters. And the Israelites, they're traveling uh, south and they reach a mountain, Mount Sinai. And Moses goes up the mountain to meet with the presence of God. And it's on this mountain that God downloads all these instructions and teachings and and commandments to Moses, commandments of how to live, how to treat one another, how to worship God. And in the midst of that is the 10 commandments. And Jesus later summarizes all of these commands with really two commands. He says, all the law and the prophets really hang on these two commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You see, God established those laws in the, the middle, in the wilderness, in the in-between. But there's one of the 10 commandments that really sticks out to me, and I want to park there for a minute. It's in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. It's not even a new command. It's a reminder of a previous command. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And on it, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son, daughter, or male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any, no one. No one's going to work on the Sabbath. And here's why in verse 11. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. And God didn't rest because he was tired or worn out or exhausted or depleted. God rested 
because he built it into the very fabric of creation. It was part of the the rhythm of creation. And man and woman were created on the sixth day. And on the very next day, the very first thing that man and woman experienced was rest. And so they worked out of a place of rest. And God isn't just resting from the work. The day of rest is so he that he might enjoy his work. So rest isn't just about being still and doing nothing. Rest is about having a party, enjoying yourself on your Sabbath. So in times of uncertainty, we can be certain that rest is a gift. If we can learn to rest in a pandemic, do you know how healthy we could become, how much we could grow and how much we could actually accomplish? It's been scientifically proven that those who rest well actually get more done. So rest is a gift even in a pandemic. A few months ago, I overheard this conversation uh, between these two guys and it was, it was during our, our stay-at-home order. And one guy was talking to the other and he's like, hey, how you doing during this time? And the other guy responded, you know, staying busy as if that's the goal, as if that's the dream to stay busy. If you want to stay busy and if you don't want to rest well, here's how you do it. You fill your time, you stay busy, you get rid of all the margin in your life and you never stop looking at your phone or TV or your computer and you cling to anxiety like a close friend. You consume the headlines of COVID, the economy, the election, restrictions of freedoms versus public safety. Did you know that every single cell phone has a built-in feature proven to reduce anxiety? Have you heard about this? All right, so here's how it works. Every single phone has this. I don't know how, iPhones have it and uh, non-iPhones have it too. So you hold this side button for three seconds and then this red swipey thing comes at the top and then you, you push that. I'd never seen this before. And now your phone is off. It's amazing. It's so, but for so many of us, the only time our phone is off is when it's depleted, when it needs to be recharged. How many of us live life like that? That the only time we rest is when we are depleted. What if it wasn't supposed to be like that? In times of uncertainty, we can be certain that rest is a gift. I want to go back to the beginning of the Israelites' journey. You see, they barely left Egypt, and they're on the edge of the wilderness. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 20, it says, After leaving Succoth, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. They're on the edge of the desert. They just left Egypt. They haven't even crossed the Red Sea yet. They're just starting their journey. And here's what it says. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud, to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day or by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. And this pillar, it was an ongoing reminder of the presence of God, whether by day or by night. Because in uncertain times, we can be certain that God is here in the day or in the night, in the bright spots or the darkness, in the blessing or in the pain, in the seasons of the in-between, in the messy middle, it's easy to believe that God has left, that he's abandoned us, or at the very least, he's silent. And maybe you're there right now. I've been there. I've experienced that. I've experienced the loneliness. I've experienced the exhaustion and the fatigue. I've experienced darkness. I've experienced what feels like, what feels like the absence of God. And maybe that's you today. And if that's you, oh, I want to invite you. Maybe you're multitasking right now or you got a couple browser tabs open or you're doing the dishes or laundry or something. I want, I want to invite you to stop whatever you're doing and lean in just for a minute and take a breath. And I want to remind you 
that God is here. He's never left you and he won't ever leave you. No matter what it feels like, if, even though it doesn't feel good, God is still good. Even if it doesn't feel like God is there, God is there with you right here and right now. He has never left you and he loves you. He loves you. And even more than that, so God sent this pillar of fire and this pillar of smoke to the Israelite people um, as, a, as a symbol of his presence. And it'd be really cool if we got this pillar of fire, uh, this pillar of smoke to re remind us that, of God's presence. But the thing is, we have something so much better than that, someone so much better than that. Because God wasn't the fire and he wasn't the smoke. So God has given every single one of us, every follower of Jesus Christ, the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, we have the very real and tangible and actual presence of God dwelling within us. We have the very power of God dwelling within us. God is here, especially in times of uncertainty. Do you know the first thing Jesus did when he started his ministry? See, Jesus goes to the River Jordan and he's baptized by John and he comes out of the water and heavens open up and the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a dove and a voice from heaven. The Father says, this is my son, my beloved. And so the identity of Jesus is established right there and everything he does now, it flows from that identity. And the very next thing that Jesus does, he goes into the wilderness he spends 40 days in the wilderness, preparing, praying, fasting. Do you know how long the Israelites were in the wilderness? 40 years, 40. And it was in the wilderness. The wilderness helped prepare the Israelites for the promised land. And the wilderness helped prepare Jesus for the weight of ministry. But if I'm being really honest, I don't like the wilderness. I don't like the in-between. I don't like uncertainty. I want to arrive at the promised land. That's where I want to be. But for me, I don't know what it is for you, but for me, this is what God is doing in this season. See, God's been doing a work in me. God's been using this season to help me let go of things that I was placing my certainty in, placing my trust in, placing my hope in. I didn't even realize I was doing it things I should not have been placing my certainty in. And he's been using this season to strengthen my certainty in Christ and in Christ alone. In these uncertain times, don't waste your wilderness because you can be certain in uncertain times that God will provide. You are not alone. Rest is a gift and God is here. Maybe you're listening or watching today and you realize there's not anything that you can be certain of except God. And I just want to remind you that God is here and God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you and then be raised to life for you. That, and now you and I, we have the, the opportunity to participate in that resurrection power. And not just after this life and in the next life, but right here, right now, we have the opportunity in Jesus to live an abundant life. And what that looks like, especially in seasons of uncertainty, is that we have a peace. We, we, we live out of a space of peace that just doesn't make sense. And we live out of a space of joy that doesn't, our, our external circumstances and our context doesn't matter as much, but we have this, this profound sense of joy and we get to live out our calling and our purpose as we, as we actively participate with God as he redeems this world to himself. God loves you so much. And so maybe today is the day to make that decision. Maybe you've never made that decision uh, before to give Jesus Christ your life, to make him Lord of your life. Or maybe it was a decision you made a long time ago and today is the day you come back home to him. 
And if that's you today, if you want to make that decision today, there's a hand that's going up on your screen or an emoji. Click that hand. And what that click represents, it's a physical move that, of a spiritual decision that says, that's me. I'm making that decision today. I'm all in. God, I give you everything. Jesus, would you change my life? Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Make me new. And then after you click that button, please fill out the form. We want to walk with you. We want to journey with you. We want to be a part of your story. Not so we can collect data, but because no one walks alone. You're not supposed to walk alone. And so we want to be a part of your journey. We can be certain in uncertain times because we have a God who is here and has never left us. Father God, so grateful for everything that you have done in the season of the in-between. In the season where we don't know much, God, but we know you. And we know that you are faithful and we know that you are good even when it doesn't feel good. So we will continue to trust you. We will continue to put our eyes on you. We will continue to find our joy and our peace and our identity in you and you alone. We can be certain in you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Pure Heart family, thank you for joining us today. A couple quick reminders. I've heard from so many of you who are struggling with the extended shutdowns, repeated quarantines, social distancing. And during this time, we need to be connected in community. It's so essential to walk with others and not walk alone. So go to pureheart.org slash circles or text circles to 97000 to get connected in a life group. Also, if you're looking for any of the links that we mentioned during the service, you're joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome. You need prayer or you want to help with our COVID-19 response teams. You'll find all those ways to get connected at the link, pureheart.org slash watch. So be encouraged. Have an amazing week and keep your focus on him this week, Pure Heart, as we continue to love like Christ for the sake of others in new and exciting ways. See you next week.